My name is uh, Juliana Noko. I am social anthropologist from the Sorbonne University. I'm also trained in uh, epidemiology and public health and gender and health. I'm currently a regional advisor for uh, risk communication and community engagement, social anthropology at the WHO Regional Office for Africa. I'm based in Dakar, Senegal, and I'm working for the Emergency Preparedness and Response Program, mainly the preparation. The second example I would like to share with you is how community engage to rebuild an Ebola treatment center after it was set on fire. This community engagement example occurred in the city of Katwa. Katwa is a, a city in North Kivu in DRC Republic. The region is, the area is bordering uh, uh, Uganda and uh, Rwanda and is the, 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 the big lakes of Africa in the Eastern region of uh, Africa. The emergency situation was the Ebola outbreak response in an active war zone. I think this was the major challenge that uh, as a responder we, were, we have ever uh, addressed saving people's lives in a war zone and trying to save our own lives. Two Ebola treatment centers were set on fire and attacked by unknown people. They killed sick people, they also killed security, uh, people who were uh, uh, providing the security at the entry of the Ebola treatment center. And after that, they set the treatment center on fire. Sick people had to run away to save their lives and they returned home, although sick and infected by the deadly virus of Ebola. At the same time, the contamination level was very high. So as community reluctance, aggressiveness, and resistance. What we did therefore, it became a top priority to rebuild the Ebola treatment center to save life and to give the treatment to people who was at home infecting each other and also infecting the rest of their community. To rebuild this, the pillar, the logistic pillar was in charge of rebuilding the, the Ebola treatment center. But all the responders, we were afraid of if we rebuild the treatment center by ourselves, maybe it will be set on fire again. So we decided to check with the community, to discuss the issue with them, to collect first their, their, their feedback if they really wanted to have another treatment center or not. So what we did, we conduct a rapid analysis. We discuss with some leaders, we check with them to see what do they think about rebuilding an Ebola treatment center. The leaders say to us that they need to sit with their own community leaders of association, women, youth, reluctant people, traditional authority, religious leader to discuss the idea. So they discuss the idea. The day after they call us, we went there and they share with us the result of the community discussions. The community agreed. And they said that they really want to have another Ebola treatment center. But they wanted to rebuild it by themselves. Because building, if they build a treatment center, they will protect this treatment center because their beloved ones are there receiving cares. Many partners was involved, of course, WHO, uh, HQ, the Regional Office for Africa, the WHO Country Office, the Ministry of Health, partners such as UNICEF, IFRC, ALIMA, Operation Logistic and Pillars, community leaders, traditional and religious leaders, influence group, and also the group of reluctant people. Women group were also involved the administrative and political authorities. What we did, 
once the community agreed on rebuilding the Ebola treatment center, they held a second meeting with anthropologists and the risk communication team to share the modalities and the condition of rebuilding the treatment center. So the leaders, the, the neighborhood leaders organized three consecutive meetings during which they selected in public people who were to get involved and recruited to rebuild the ETU. They selected 1,020 people and women were, and there were 35 women inside this group. After that, the WHO recruited an engineer to supervise all the 120 people because they had experience, community had experience in building their homes, but building a, a treatment center, there are the protocols that should be applied on how to build a treatment center. So an engineer was there and IPC, infection prevention and control expert was also there and the build local people capacities on the protocol and the process of building an Ebola treatment center. WHO funded all the, the, the project and also the recruitment of the local people in a daily basis. The day, so the, the local leaders say that they want to organize a traditional ceremony on the site where they, we have to rebuild the Ebola treatment center. There was a traditional authority called the Mwami, called the Mwami. The Mwami is the one in charge of begging the forgiveness of the ancestors. And also, if someone died in that community, Mwami is one of the persons that will negotiate with the ancestors and accompany the spirit of the dead man to travel up to the ancestor's place. So the Moami conducted the blessing ceremony and launched the construction of the previous, on the previous place where, on the previous uh, 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 place where the Ebola treatment center was set on fire. He used the local traditional drink called kasiksi. He, throw, he pulled the, this, uh, he threw it on the floor and begged the ancestor to forgive and to protect the new ETU center. Each leader, women, youth, reluctant uh, group, uh, all people, they share the drink and they bless the place. And they swear that they will protect the Ebola treatment center and nobody will attack again the center because they want their people to be given the cares, adequate care to fight the Ebola outbreak, Ebola disease, sorry, and go back home safely. So we had a challenge. The great challenge was the mistress because we were in a war zone the community never trust in, 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 in the response teams. But this, this mistrust was the, was the background of all this process of community engagement. And what we, how we address the mistrust, we listening, we take time to listening to the community every day, every morning, every night, we were there with them, we stayed with them, we spent the whole day with them. So we want to, so that we demonstrate that, that we, we, are, we want them to trust in us and we are together in the problem and we need to find the solution together. We were always responding to community requests. We never stopped dialoguing with them. We never stopped listening to them. And we empower them every day, explaining to them what is a Ebola treatment center, facilitating the protocols. The, our team was in the communities, working hand in hand with them to help them understand the importance of the process 
and to facilitate all the complexity of the, of the protocols to them. In terms of results, we had the following. The treatment center was, was rebuilt in seven days by 120 community uh, people on March 2019. No other attacks were registered up to the declaration of the end of the Ebola outbreak in 2021. Young people provide a security at the entry of the Ebola treatment center. And some of them was working as guides to, to support Ebola treatment center users and take them from place to place. The reluctance to go to the Ebola treatment center stopped immediately after the community built or rebuilt the Ebola treatment center. The community social mobilizer continuously sensitized their community, encouraging them to go to the new Ebola treatment center. And the Ebola treatment center was renamed by the community. Instead of Ebola treatment center, he was renamed in the local language as the healing house. So at the moment they renamed it, it at their healing house, they, take, they took ownership of their healing house and everything went really, really smoothly. I would like to share with you some key insights of this experience. Listening to community, empower them to take ownership of the response intervention is key for their engagement. If you have social, social scientists, it's good to mobilize them since the beginning of the response so that they will facilitate the research or rapid research and will provide first line responders with key information on the context, on the perceptions, on the health seeking behavior. If not, you can also work hand in hand with some local people that will support you and bring you and provide you with the information on their context. Community engagement is not, is a long process and it is iterative because you have to establish good relationship with, partner, with, with the good partnership and effective partnership with community and with the frontline responders. And these partnerships should be based on the respect of the culture of each other, of the communities, and the culture of the first line responder. 